you can take my one. daddy we're, said we're gonna start doing that in a couple weeks. <laughs> <laughs> Sardines in my pan and vine sauce and just while I was doing it. <coughs> so I can wipe the worm off and eat. Well, uh, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Everyone's here today. Thank you. Uh, and we should maybe have some other walk in when they smell the food. Um, so forth. Open the doors. Okay. All right. So, anyways, uh, Chris, thank you, Crystal. Did a good job of the bulletin again. All right. And uh, and last uh, week uh, she hits me up on Friday night. What's your uh, notes and all? And so I sent her to Friday afternoon <laughs> this time. So. Oh, now she's going to hit me up earlier. All right. So, anyways, uh, we'll look at a few things here. Just uh, after service, uh, we have. Uh, stay, please stay. Let's enjoy some good fellowship. I assume a big part of church is uh, what relationships with Jesus, most importantly, but also with each other. And uh, part of that is, you know, every Sunday we, and some some well, Wednesday, and maybe some other times we get talking some. But you know, it's good to sit down, break bread, food, and uh, get to know each other. Amen. Amen. And, uh, and my dad once in a while has a joke, so maybe he'll tell one at once. What's that? I understand it's going to be. Steaks? Oh yeah, uh, tube steaks. Sorry, hot dogs. Oh, yeah, but I think it's the good ones, the excellent ones. And uh, also on worship team, Larry Teeter is here today. All right. Woo! So I'll mention him. He's here much of the time, or wherever he wakes up. When he wakes up, his wife tells him where to go. All right. So, all right. So got you on that one. And uh, let's see. Everything else. Look in here. Uh, and look at the bulletin and uh, look at uh, the newsletter. And Lois is here, yes. <clears throat> Welcome, Lois. Thank you for coming today. And uh, next week, listen, Mother's Day. Everyone be here. It's going to be amazing. I'm going to, Pastor Mike's going to do a true lesson with that. whatever children are here. Uh, we got a couple hands. My daughter and uh, your granddaughter, our hands are saying, right? They got ham jeans. And so we'll have a, I'm going to do that. And then Melissa and uh, possibly a guest are going to do uh, the, the message at, at the end of the service. All right, prayer request. We'll pray for Crystal. She's been under the weather. And uh, I guess Tim's going to have to make some soup. Um, so. <laughs> so, uh, all right, and uh, we'll pray for Carl. I have not heard lately, uh, but uh, maybe I'll give him a call. Well, I'll probably give him a call next day or two. Testimony, I guess, is that. Uh, whoa, all right, yes. <laughs> Testimony is uh, Tim did well. Maybe he'll share at some point in the service or at the end. Okay. Uh, 173 miles, 100 mile winds. <laughs> <laughs> Downhill. I would have fell, but Tim kept going. All right, he made it. I saw the video. I didn't I didn't download it, but I saw the video. I'll have to share it. Did you, you share it with some people, I think. I put it on YouTube, so it's there. All right, so look at Tim's YouTube. Maybe you can share it with the people. I don't think he does. All right. Yeah, so All right. Anyone else? Any other prayer request? Yeah, a couple of special requests. I mean, I'm going to work out. Okay. Anyone else? Oops. Oh, I hope the hamburger is good today. My brother gets over his allergies, and I don't get any more of them. That's where she started. Oh, okay. All right. It's been two weeks at least. Yeah. All right. Well. Hey, Mike. Allergies got going. Yes, Dwayne. Pray for our, pray for Hope. Okay. Uh, she just started a new job last night, and uh, she's gonna need you're gonna need God to get through the first little while till she gets on the schedule. And I think she'll be all right. Okay. And she actually was about to walk in and watch me do a little invite video last night. <laughs> so, she says, hey, boy. Hey, Patrick. All right, Lord God, we just thank you, Lord God, for this morning, this time to be together. And we are just have, have full, of, you know, full of excitement to be in God's house with these people in my church family. And uh, we are praying that, uh, Lord, that many more people will come to you through our lives and, and to this church and many churches that we've been praying for. We pray, for, like, Lord God, we pray for real life this month. We just pray for Pastor Mike Davis and that you would work in their church even now in the name of Jesus. Lord, we lift up hope up to you. We just pray as she has started this uh, new uh, job, we just pray and give her strength and give her 
uh, wisdom and, and we pray that you would guide her in the name of Jesus. Lord God, we lift up Crystal up to you. We just pray healing upon her body in the name of Jesus. And we just thank you, the blessing that Crystal is to our lives and to our church. We also pray for Marla that you would fight off the, she would fight off the allergies and anything else in the name of Jesus, we pray. I lift up Richard, our friend, up to you. Touch his body, heal his back in the name of Jesus. And we pray for the uh, special request uh, that he mentioned. We just pray you answer prayers. And we pray you would answer them in the name of Jesus. And Lord, we pray over this time as we're in your presence that you would speak to our hearts and speak to our lives. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. I believe we have Dwayne sharing a song first and then we'll have a worship team. <coughs> Before we get started with the song, I just want to give you a little background on this. When I heard this song the first time, it really kind of brought to light something that I never really thought about. Certain songs hit me different ways. This one really touched my heart. Um, and uh, I believe once you hear the words of this song, you'll understand why. It, it stands with everybody in this room and everybody out there in the world today. Stands there for everybody.
Okay. And I'll uh anyway. blessings upon our lives. And I'm also thankful that uh, Carl and Shirley are here and Leslie and Emmanuel are here. 
And Lois is here. All right, we're all here in God's presence. Lord God, we just thank you for your blessings upon our lives. And we give unto you, Lord God. We thank you. We don't do it to get. We do it because, uh, well, it's obedience. It's obedience unto you. And we thank you. We pray you'd multiply what is uh, given to further the kingdom in the name of Jesus, to grow disciples, us and others. And Lord, I just pray you be lifted up. In Jesus' name, amen. Tim, will this be a good Surely has one yeah, song. Surely you got something you want to. She said she has a Mother's Day one. I thought this was Mother's Day. I'm a week ahead. I've got a Mother's Day song. Oh, Let's get ready. Right? Here we go. You want me to sing it? <laughs> yes, please. Now? Yeah. Okay. Come on. <laughs> it's an old one.
be there. Hallelujah. God bless you. God bless you. Praise the Lord. He's good to us, isn't he? Amen. <laughs> Yeah. 
Lord God, we just thank you, Lord God, that you, Lord God, are there for us. We thank you, Lord God, that uh, you not just came and lived, but you, you died, but you resurrected. And Lord God, we thank you that you are alive and well. And Lord God, you are here for us today in this moment. And we look to you in the name of Jesus. And Lord God, we thank you, Lord God, that we can leave here changed and transformed. And we just pray, give us ears to hear what you would show us in the name of Jesus. And Lord God, we thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Acts chapter 1, verse 3. And uh, the theme verse, so if you'll turn there and be ready, or, or it'll be on the screen and it's in your bulletin as well. And uh, so this is our platform verse. I hope if you noticed when I've been doing different series, I have a main verse, and I hope we'll remember those verses. Uh, and I remember in children's church, they have a main verse and, and help us to remember. So a quick uh, verse, uh, we actually shared this Wednesday, Romans 12, 11, and I'm paraphrasing, but be full of zeal, and it talks about specifically <clears throat> zeal for the Word, the Word of God, but I believe as Christians, we should be the most zealous people, one about the Word, but about life. I think we should wake up and be excited, now whether you wake up at five or you wake up maybe a few hours later, that we should be excited what God has in store and our eyes should be open and our ears be open for what God would have for us each day. Amen? Amen. Uh, see, so I had Caitlin, on, I went to, a, I was at a pastor uh, conference and uh, meetings the last few days and I took Caitlin with me and I offered her during break time or lunch time, supper time, I said, I can either, we can go to a restaurant together and I'll, I'll take you wherever you want to go. Well, within reason. Uh, anywhere you want, and, or you, we go to the pool and we'll just get some, uh, you know, sandwiches or whatever. And she put the pool. I, I, we went through about four or five hours, added up, not not one break. And uh, she was jumping and swimming like a dolphin and everything else. And uh, she was zealous to be in the pool. All right, how many has some kids or had kids? Zell, maybe some of us. Boy, maybe me and you could get zealous in the island for the pool. And so here's something that's pretty uh, wild. Is our, I went to an HOA meeting. How many of been to a homeowner association meeting? That was, I was thought, man, that was wild. I went to ours and I came home and said, well, listen, listen, make sure you stop at every stop sign. Make sure you don't, we don't speak because they are cra you know, crazy in this area. And long story short, they've been sending emails and and letters to have the pool open earlier because normally it opens Labor Day weekend. Memorial Day. Give me switched. switch. All right, we'll, that would be really bad way to Labor Day. So anyway, so long story short, uh, they've been asking, let's open up soon or it's warm out and it's opening up next weekend, I understand. So that is almost a miracle of not. It's as uh, close as you can get and uh, for, for a pool type thing. And so praise God, people will be excited. And uh, so I'm going to uh, move on down to uh, last week uh, recap. And uh, so I did sword, if you remember, for us to remember, sword. I had Melissa took a couple good pictures with me with a kid's sword. Uh, I would use and get a real sword, but they are expensive, I believe, right? Amen? And dangerous. We have a two-year-old that gets into everything, all right? So we don't want a sword in the house with Caleb in the house. But if you remember, when we looked at sword, the one of the main things that I shared last week was we believe, and this is our tenet by some of us, what do we believe as a church and serving to God, that man's only hope of redemption is through the shed blood of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. That's the only path to redemption. We cannot do it by being having a checklist and and how many, listen, I, I sometimes write out lists on my phone, or I used to write them out. Check. I drink only water today. I, I, that doesn't happen every day. Check. I, I, uh, whatever it may be to help me remember. But listen, we don't work our way to heaven. It is what? It is finished from what he did on the cross, what Jesus did. It was what? It's done. And uh, we can strive but listen, Romans 10, 13, it says, For whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. 
It's not whoever can uh, what memorize the most verses. So now that's certainly good. It's good to memorize the word, but that's not going to get you to heaven. And it'll help you to to live right by what by obeying God's word and and so forth. But I, I do want to share that one thing they uh, challenged us on this trip was. One in three thousand. All right, one in three thousand. So within our churches, uh, meaning the fellowship statewide, they are believing for three thousand to be baptized in water this year. I, I say that's a good challenge uh, to, for us as a state. In other words, not just our church, all churches together. And they did this basically. They took if ten percent. In other words, whatever size church, if ten percent. Are bat, have that many baptisms. So basically, with our church, it would be like three or four. And how many think that's possible? All right, so I already have Caitlin and Dave. All right, so anyone else, if you have not been, it's obedience. Uh, Melissa, when she was, soon after we met, uh, she was baptized, water baptized, and they asked her, why are you, why are you doing it? Why, why are you doing this? You know why? And, and Melissa's answer was what? Time to be obedient. And so listen, we're not going to get into whether you, you'll make heaven or not, all this. It, it, it talks about the Word is what? When you get saved, when you give your heart to Jesus, you should do it, all right? And there's many other things you should do, but that is a basic salvation obedience. And so listen, if anyone here, if you have not been, July, we're looking at doing it. And uh, I have a couple ideas I'm going to throw out. Uh, we could do it at the lake or the pool, but hey, listen... I found out a local church not too far away, they have a tank that they will bring and build. We can do it here or outside, right out here, and just have it right smack, right here. How would you like that? I've seen some churches, what they're doing. Wouldn't this be amazing that we have just a, a amazing worship and we start baptizing? That, that would be phenomenal, all right? And, uh, Krista, you might have to just take over for Dave when he's being baptized, all right? <laughs> and, you know, we can just put some tarps down. I'm excited. I, I'm pumped. Uh, baptized my daughter. I told her, listen, Caitlin, when you give your heart to Jesus, you need to be have your preacher baptized. And she goes, Dad, you're my preacher. <laughs> so, all right. So one in 3,000. And I uh, have some, uh, actually, they give us bracelets. And uh, so I gave Dave one because we're believing in faith for him. And they say one in 3,000. So we're believing this for, for uh, us and the churches of this state, not, not just the Seminoles, but we're blaming it for the fellowship. And it's because, listen, there, we need a true revival. We need God's love to be shared and people to come to Jesus and then follow through in obedience. Amen? Yeah. All right, so today, Acts chapter 1, verse 3. Last week I shared, like I said, swords So today. I, I'm keeping it easy. We're going to use the word proofs. Proofs. And it's right there in the bulletin. Uh, thank you, Crystal. She's doing an amazing job. She is helping Jesus be famous, but also helping us to learn. It's on the back of the bulletin, if you see there. And uh, so uh, I'm having to be organized. She wants it by Saturday morning at the latest, to which I, I can do that. And so listen, first of all, let's read the key verse, Acts 1-3. To whom he also presented himself alive after his suffering by many infallible or undeniable proofs, being seen by them during 40 days and speaking of the things pertaining to the kingdom of God. Now, one, the main biggest proof that sets Christianity apart from other religions is actually one I'm not getting on today. Uh, in those points is what? We just sang about it a few moments ago. It's the what? I think I heard someone say it. Right? The resurrection, right? Resurrecting. And so that sets apart Christianity. So number one for today, though, on proofs, is power. 1 Corinthians 4.20 For the kingdom of God is not in word, but in power. And I actually put here... Uh, uh, I was already thinking, listen, this, this is actually the biggest point, the main one, and I thought about it, and I look, and then Tim sends the email out, and it was really about this, is we can do these things and more. 
Listen, what's going to set us apart of, as, a, as Christians and as a church is not what can uh, you put your name there, what can Mike do, or what can Richard do, or what, what can you put your name there, what can we do as you know, people. No, it's what can God do through us. If we want to be doing more than we're capable of, we want to see God doing things that will take Him. I heard a story of Pastor Jenkins, Paul Jenkins. His, He's in, I, I, say the name, I pronounce it, Albemarle, honey? Albemarle, all right. But, hey, our way, I was like, I don't know. It's, but he has a church there, and here's an amazing story. Catch this. He was a youth pastor at a church uh, of decent size, 300, something like that. And, and would you not know, he told the pastor, I really believe God wants me to plant a church in this town. And it's a town of 16,000. Now, this is a... Bunny trail, but I think it's a good bunny trail. Is that, listen, that does not happen. And the pastor okayed him to do it. Now, does he have to get his okay? No, but it's still appropriate and, and kind to do, right? He's on staff at that church, and, and, and he's two miles away. Get this. And listen, they both pray and both care for each other. But here's the story he had, God spoke to him that in 40 days, they were paying off their uh, building. That they had bought them. Now they didn't have enough budget. I don't know what their budget or money would come in, but it was nowhere near where they'd have two hundred thousand extra. All right. And would you not know their people came up with seventy, eighty thousand. Someone sent a random check for fifty, and then someone else called them and said they had shares, their stocks. The most they sure was a hundred thousand, and added up about exactly what they needed. Listen, that has to be. That's a God story. All right, well, I'm saying it's a God story. We got outlets in here, you know, but 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 for us it was. But listen, I've been praying that God's going to give us this facility. All right, we're on a good spot, good location, and we're going to believe. I heard some people say, "Well, why? It's not big enough for growth." Well, I'm going to believe that at the right time we'll get more land. All right, and so that's. Uh, uh, you know what? we got to believe for more. And I encourage you to read the article, that, but it's a, a much, uh, I think I'm sharing the heart of what you shared. Is that right, Tim? And this article is, listen, we're going to pray. He was talking about the MS ride, and maybe you could share just a little bit of when we gather together, is that he's praying that one day there won't be an MS ride because it would be healed, it would be done. Maybe one day there won't be cancer. All right, and because God uh, uh, revealed to someone the, the cure, and uh, you know that's why I went to Relay for Life, and and God healed me. But listen, it's John fourteen twelve. Most assuredly I say to you, he who believes in me, the works that I do, he will do also, and greater works than these he will do, because I go to my Father. All right, listen, we then what's going to separate us? What is a proof that we're truly Christian? Is that we're being Christ-like and God is doing more through us than we're capable of. That we're doing more individually and as a church. And I challenge that God, you would listen to God on, on every area of your life with gifts, with talents, with finances, everything. Is not to limit God. He's limitless. And believe that he'll come through. Second way. So first one, power. And I'll actually, if you want to put a star, I would star this one as the one I felt the most urgent for this morning on these points on proofs. But secondly, and by the way, uh, Jackie was almost telling my message on some of these points when I was just talking to him, including this point, number two. Rose Garden. So listen, here's a little statement. Listen, life isn't fair. Babies die. Good people suffer. I, I, I'll be in, uh, winding down at night, and sometimes I'll look over and I'll see Melissa like dropping tears. And I'm like, what's going on? She's watching some video of some uh, child that is sick or something. And I'm like, why are you watching that? I can't watch it. And, uh, but but he, she does the same thing to me. And I'm like, listen, I care. I care, but I don't know them. And I'm trying to wind down. And, and she'll be dropping a tear. But listen, it's true. Life is not fair. They have Levine for not just adults like myself. They or not anymore for myself. But they have Levine for babies downtown and, and children. Is that right, Melissa? And, uh, and so listen. And, 
And, and here's what I'm getting at. There's a false, I heard, and I have heard false altar calls or prayer challenges in the end of messages that, listen, you give your heart to Jesus. I gave my life to Jesus, and then everything started working out. Uh, I love the movie Facing the Giants uh, part of it. I love part of it. But it also made it look like every prayer gets answered the way you ask it to be prayed. I mean, is that right? Anyone see that movie? And I was like, wow, that's amazing. But listen, life as a Christian or anyone is not a rose garden. Everything does not try to turn out rosy. Listen, I have never done anything to cause cancer. I, I, I don't smoke. I, I, well, I won't get into all the things I had to check off I don't do. And uh, it was nothing that, that I it caused that. It, it happened. And, and so listen, John 16.33, it says, These things I have spoken to you, that in, in me you may have peace. In this world you will have tribulation. You will have trials, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. Listen, we can still be at peace because we have Jesus. And even when we're going through the valley, yes, it's not to say we're going to be all, oh, listen, no, sometimes we mourn. And, but uh, the thing is, God will hold our hand and take us through. But trials come to the good and the bad. And Matthew 5, 45 that you may be sons of your Father in heaven, for He makes the sun to rise on the evil and on the good, and sends rain on the just and on the unjust. I'll be clear. I, I do believe that if we follow the guidebook, the guidebook for life, the Bible, that yes, there are principles of being blessed uh, financially. There's principles to be blessed. But I also know there are people around the world that live right and do right, but what? They, 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 they still don't have a lot of material. Is that correct? We know that? And so listen, we're not talking about prosperity, but we're speaking, and here's the truth, it rains on the good and the bad. Is that right? Amen? And uh, so, but I do, so we do believe that if we follow the principles, uh, you know what, God, uh, you reap, Sow and reap, and what you plant, uh, well, you know, you plant certain seeds, and they'll come back, and so forth. Amen. So, thirdly, so uh, proofs, P and then R, P and R, and uh, Jackie, when are we talking about this? All right, you brought. She was reading my. Uh, did you get my email? Did I send this to you? All right. So, thirdly, I'm going to touch on from last week. One way. Listen, uh, uh, this was just on my heart to recap and remind on this. There are many that believe that there are many ways to heaven. And, and in other words, there's many religions, many uh, beliefs, a uh, new age. And what happens, you might have like 10 different doors. And you go through the door and you get to another room. And everyone goes through there and they get in this room and there's one door. And you go through that door and there's heaven. How many of you have heard this, right? Many have heard that, that thinking or that thought. But the Lord said, no, and I should have last week, John 14, 6, I am the way, the truth, and the life. But there's, but there's only one way, it's through Jesus. I am the way, the truth, and the life. Nobody comes to the Father except through me. Acts 4, 12. Salvation is found in no one else, for there is no greater, no other name under heaven given to mankind by which we must be saved. One way. There's that myth that, that there's many ways to heaven. But listen, I've heard people say, man, you, you know what? Uh, you guys are narrow-minded. Well, we are narrow-minded. <laughs> the Word of God, the Bible is narrow-minded. There's a narrow gate. The narrow gate is Jesus is the way and the only way. Amen? The, the broad gate is like, oh, you're okay, I'm okay. You know, you help someone out, you, you'll, be, you'll make it. But no, there's the narrow way, and that's the Jesus way. And so, I will say this, is that hell was not made for people. Amen? It's made for the devil and uh, demons. And so 2 Peter 3, 9, it says, The Lord is not slow in keeping His promise. As some understand slowness, instead, He is patient with you, 
not wanting anyone to perish, but everyone to come to repentance. He wants everyone to come to repentance. So listen, we time is short. And yes, we want to be narrow-minded because uh, we can't tell people they're, you're okay, life's okay. No, we need to tell them the truth. Right. All right, with love, with love, with God's love. So four is actually okay. All right, it's okay. So P R O O proofs. And so listen, there's many that. How many remember back in school days, and you would have a teacher that, and you're like, you're talking to friends, and you're like, man, how'd you do? I don't know how I did, and you don't know. How, and you're talking, no one did great. No one got like 80 or higher. You're like, oh, I think I got like a 70 some, and. Uh, Oh man, I hope they curve this. Remember, remember those days? But then, uh, you, then you have someone, some one character in the class that ruins the curve. All right, you know. And sometimes we think, you know what? I'm okay. You know why I'm okay? Because when I'm better than him, or I, you know, I, I haven't gone and done that stuff. I haven't, I haven't gone and robbed the, you know, robbed the store. I haven't, well, I haven't been that bad. I haven't gone shopping. Whatever it may be. But listen. <coughs> We're not making heaven because we're better than someone else. Right. We're not more or less successful of people or a church because we're better or less than some other church. Now, we don't, shouldn't compare anyways, but we're not making heaven or, or busting doors open because we're better than someone else. What is it talking about? And I'll refer to this one. It's at John 3, 7, and actually verse 3, 3 3 as well. And who is it talking? Who is Jesus talking to? A quick quiz in John chapter 3. Nick and Jesus. Good job, Richard. And it's amazing. A lot of people don't know John 3 16 is, is from him talking to Nicodemus. And it says, they this say, hey, Nicodemus, you know all these important religious people. You're a religious, you're knowledgeable. It says what? You must be born again. Born again. Good. Gloria Teeter, I'm impressed. Extra cake, or make sure she gets a hamburger, Marla, wherever she is. All right, there's uh, you know a lot of hamburgers, but limited. Mom gets one if she wants. All right, and uh, so yes, it doesn't say you're smart. You've done a lot of good things. It says you, you must be born again. So for each one of us, it's about a relationship with Jesus. We're not going to be able to say. You know what, I did all these good things. It's a matter of us and our heart right with the Lord and our relationship with Him. Amen? Amen. Is that true? Yes. All right, so number five. <clears throat> Feeding on the Word. Listen, what you feed grows. And it grows from what? It, it grows from what you feed it. What are we feeding our lives? One verse, 1 Peter 2.2. 2. Jackie, I think you shared this one beforehand. It, 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 listen to this one. As newborn babes desire the pure milk of the Word that you may grow thereby. Listen, we, when we uh, first took home our two children, listen, Caleb will eat anything and everything and much of it, all right? But I did not cut up steak when he first came home, all right? He had what? No milk, teeth. all right, good job. Milk, and as a newborn babe. But, but listen, we want to dive into the Word and go deeper. But listen, we need to make sure we're at least getting the milk of the Word, getting the basics of the Word on a regular, daily basis. Uh, uh, amen. If you want to, to live a successful life, a successful Christian life, then be in the Word, the, the pure milk of the Word. But now, mind you, we also, I, I don't drink just milk anymore. I, 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 well, I'll drink, you know, well, it should be milk and water. <laughs> but I was going to say, I, I like, uh, you know, good steak. I like some uh, vegetables. And, and uh, we want to dive in, like we've been talking about, undeniable proofs. And what is the Word telling us? What does it say uh, before the whole chapter? What does the historical say? What is it, what is it saying for, for at that time? But what is it saying for me now? I see a lot of people quiet. Is that not right? Amen? And, uh, but listen, let's certainly make sure we're getting the milk of the Word. 
Proofs, P-R-O-O-F-S. So this one I touched on briefly uh, when I was doing the offering of stewardship. Listen, if you want to check proof of, of someone's life as a Christian, certainly the fruit of the Spirit, I, that's, that's the real check. But also, if you want to check, check someone's, uh, what they do with what they have. The material stuff, their time, and their money. And listen, I'm not saying that just with a church, not just tithe and offering, but what do they do with the whole of what God's given them? If someone has stuff, you know, material things, and they're, they hold on to it, and they're saying, hey, you can borrow this, but man, don't you put a little scratch on it. You know, <laughs> then your stuff has you. You know, if someone borrows your car and there's a little dust spot or a little bit of pollen, you, what? that wasn't there before. Or I've heard people that someone moves something in their house and listen, our stuff is only our stuff because God provided the, the finances or provided the way for us to have our stuff. Amen? We are stewards. And you can check someone's heart on how they are stewards of what God gave them. And this is something that, that's a proof. Matter of fact, I hear it. Uh, listen, it's not die-hard proof. In other words, that's not the only proof. But there are some people that give, but their hearts aren't there. So it certainly says, out of, the, out of your heart, give with the, the good heart in, the, in Corinthians. The earth is the Lord's in all its fullness, the world and those who dwell therein. Psalms 24, verse 1. A challenge verse. I'm going to share. I shared a couple last week. I'm going to share those again, but also Romans 2.1. Therefore, you are inexcusable, O oh man, whoever you are who judge, for in whatever you judge, another you condemn yourself. For you who judge, practice the same things. Now, it's a sermon in itself, but I want to catch that part. We are without excuse. We should make sure that we examine our own hearts and our own lives. We should make sure that we're not just going, I see in that person and how they're not uh, doing what the Word of God says, but instead say, God, what are you showing me? 2 Corinthians 13, 5. Examine yourselves to see whether you are in the faith. Test yourselves. Do you not realize that Christ Jesus is in you? Unless, of course, you fail the test. And one more. Philippians 2, 12. Do everything without grumbling. Therefore, my dear brothers, as you have always obeyed, not only in my presence, but now much more in my absence, continue to work out your salvation with fear and trembling. With fear and trembling. And uh, someone asked, I think she Tim, would you just strum a little bit? And uh, I want to ask that we spend a few moments, a few minutes, just examine our lives, and and uh, as as uh, we I pray here in just a moment. Listen, if you need to give your heart to rededicate to the Lord, this is your opportunity. This is our moment. If there's anything that we are holding on to, any bitterness, and it's easy, it's easy. We can get bitter because life sometimes throws us curveballs. Is that not right? And it can be tough, but we still cannot allow it to stick to us. And so that's any of us. We need to make sure we lay it at the cross. Lay it here at the altar. I certainly challenge as we reflect and pray to find a place at the altar, uh, if you would like, but if not, certainly in your seat. We're going to make this a house of prayer. And, uh, and so also we'll pray for different things in a few moments. Lord God, I just pray right now, Lord God. We pray and we thank, I thank you, Lord God, that you are doing a work in my life and lives that are here right now and those that may hear or watch this message. Lord God, I just pray that in the name of Jesus, we would have a hunger for your word and have a hunger, a zeal for, for you, Lord God. A zeal that does not waver by people's opinion or about culture or about popularity. But I pray that our zeal would be because of your love for us, because we love people and we want to see people come to you. And Lord, I pray right now for 
each one of us, uh, right now we lay it at the altar. Anything that we held on to, we, we give it over to you in the name of Jesus. Lord, I pray that all of us would leave <laughs> this morning when we leave <laughs> a refreshed and brand new in the name of Jesus. Lord God, we thank you. In Jesus' name. Amen. Let's spend a few moments reflecting. You can find a place at the altar or your seat. And uh, let's pray for a few minutes.